Good morning. Today we are going to see the chapter two, uh, in which we will talk about the reproductive messengers, reproductive messengers, or what we call the hormones. As you know, hormones are very important uh, when we talk about reproduction. So when we talk about reproduction, we necessarily talk about hormones because they uh, regulate uh, in a very important way function of the reproductive system. And when we talk about hormones, we will talk about endocrine system. So what do we mean by endocrine system? An endocrine system is def defined as a hormonal system. Um, the endocrine system uh, is uh, composed normally from glands. As you know, the glands in the body, they produce the hormones. So the endocrine system is composed from glands like the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, the thymus, the thyroid, the ovaries, uh, the testicles. All of those, they produce hormones that will be released in the blood circulation. Then when they are released in the blood, blood circulation, they um, and circulate in the blood to reach target, uh, which, which can be an organ situated in another part of the body. So hormone is defined as a mediator molecule that is released in one part of the body, but exerts its activity on cells in another part of the body. Um, that's what hormone is defined, is mainly defined as and uh, the endocrine system uh, also defined as the hormonal system. So when we talk about the endocrine system, the hormonal system, we will talk about or hormones, which are also called chemical messengers or mediators. So they are mediators. Uh, this endocrine system release mediators uh, or they are called also chemical messengers which are hormones that circulate in the blood. Uh, they migrate from one region of the body, circulate in the blood to reach another target in the body. Now, when we talk also about mediators or chemical messengers, the hormones are not the only mediators. We have other type of mediators also, uh, as those produced by the nervous system and which are the neurotransmitters. As you know, the, the neurons, they produce neurotransmitters uh, and the neurotransmitters are also mediators or chemical messengers that are secreted by one nerve cell and released. They are released by uh, at the level of the synapse of a nerve cell um, to reach another nerve cell or to reach the muscles or the glands so they will those mediators released by the nerve cell they uh, they also migrate from one nerve cell or another or, or from one nerve cell uh, to reach the muscles or glands uh, and then they have uh, and induce a response in uh, another part of the body so the neurotransmitters also are Called mediators and not only the hormones. So we have said that the hormones are uh, mediators which are released in one part of the body but exert their activity on cells in another part. So those hormones, once they are released by a gland, they they go they enter the interstitial fluid the interstitial fluid is the fluid between the cells and uh, the blood uh, vessels uh, and the blood vessels or capillaries so they will enter the space between the cells and the blood vessels and will be then transported by the blood circulation to their target organ or to their target cells so uh, they are mainly delivered through uh, the blood uh, circulation to their target 
uh, cells or target organs and this type of uh, hormone those type of hormones which are uh, transported by the bloods are called the endocrine hormones uh, the endocrine hormones now not all the chemical messengers are uh, we see we have seen here that those are chemical messengers which are transported then by the blood circulation not all the chemical messengers are uh, transported by the blood circulation we have cells which produce chemical messengers and those chemical messengers produced by certain cells can act directly on a cell on the cell which produced them itself and this way of action is called an, an autocrine. Auto mean um, the cell itself. Autocrine. This is an autocrine way of action. Or the, those messengers produced can act on adjacent or neighboring cells. Okay, and this type of action is called a paracrine way of action. So some chemical messengers, when they are produced, will act either on the self which produce them or on adjacent cells and in those cases they will not need to be transported by the blood circulation to reach their target uh, cells um, so now in the new definition of the term hormone uh, the meaning of the term before the term hormone was only restricted to the endocrine Hormones to the hormones which to the chemical messengers which which are tra uh, transported by the blood, blood circulation to reach their target cell, but more recently this meaning of the term hormone has been extended to include include also the chemical messengers that act in an autocrine way of action or a paracrine way of action. So the meaning of the term hormone has been extended to include the chemical messengers. Um, that are distributed to uh, neighboring cells um, and which are not necessarily migrating through the blood circulation. Now, how do those hormones act? Or how do those hormones know that this is their target cell or not? Um, in fact, uh, the, the hormones, once they reach uh, a cell, they can either enter into the cell by diffusion, so they will enter by diffusion, but to be able to have an action on, the on a cell, um, that we will call it a target cell, they should have rece receptors on the cell. Receptors can be, can be on the surface, on the plasma membrane of the target cell, or inside, in the cytoplasm of the cell. So whenever the chemical messengers or the hormones are released by a cell, when uh, they reach a target cell, let's suppose a target cell, so this target cell should have either receptors on its surface, on its plasma membrane, and those receptors will bind to those uh, hormones. And this binding between the receptors and the hormone will induce um, an action will induce a response inside of the cell okay. either those hormones uh, if they don't have receptors on the plasma membrane can enter by diffusion into a cell and then if this cell is a target cell it will have receptor cytoplasmic receptors uh, for this specific hormone in its cytoplasm. So if it has those uh, receptors to this hormone, this in, with, will induce also an answer um, inside of the cell to this hormone. So the hormones, they exert their activity by binding receptors on their target cells on their surface or inside of their target cells. Now we will go uh, more in details to talk about uh, hormones, to talk about the hormones. We will talk about their mode of secretion, their classification, and their mode of action. So as, as we have seen, the hormones uh, can take 
uh, can use a variety of routes to spread their message. They can either spread their message in an endocrine way, in a paracrine way, in an autocrine pay way, or in an exocrine way. And the secretory process, the process of the secretion of the hormones depends mainly on the nature of the secretion, the blood supply of the secreting tissue, and the solubility of the hormone. Now we will talk about the different modes, modes of secretions of the hormones. When we talk about endocrine hormones or en an endocrine way of secretion, by endocrine we mean secreted inwards. So those are, we will be talking about the hormones secreted inside of the body and we have seen that those are the hormones which are secre uh, secreted in the bloodstream. So we will have a cell uh, which will produce those endocrine hormone. Now this cell that will produce the endocrine hormone is called an endocrine cell. So we will have cells which are called the endocrine cells that will produce um, the hormone, the hormones, and then those hormones will be released in the interstitial fluid. And then they will enter the blood circulation and they will be transferred uh, through the blood circulation to, um, to their target uh, cells or target organs. The second mode of secretion of hormones is the exocrine mode of secretion. And exocrine, exo mean out. So exocrine means secreted outwards. So we mean by this the hormones uh, or the secretions that are uh, released outside of the body. So products secreted out of the body and uh, the name is uh, exocrine is uh, by contrast to endocrine because endocrine as we have said means secreted into the body into the bloodstream now when we talk about the exocrine secretions we mean uh, the substances that are secreted uh, so in this exocrine mode of action we have substances that are uh, released outside of the body or 
body cavity we will see how so they can be either the the substances released can be either released outside of the body or inside of a body cavity but by the way of a duct system so in the in the exocrine mode of action we also always have uh, a duct system uh, that will uh, through which uh, or that will transport or through which those secretion will be transported to reach either the surface of the body either the body cavity as an example we have the sweat glands the salivary glands the mammary glands the sebaceous glands the lacrimal the mucous glands which are our exocrine glands for example, here in the skin, we have we can see we have the sweat glands which produce the sweat, and so those secretions produced by the sweat glands are transported through a duct, and this duct, um, uh, and then this duct will reach the surface of the skin. So the secretions of the sweat gland will pass through this duct before reaching the surface of the gland, uh, or the surface of uh, the body the skin and we have we have also the sebaceous gland also which is an exocrine gland um, find it always uh, next to hair to hair follicles and those sebaceous glands produce oily substances which are the sebum and also the oily substances produced by the sebaceous glands are um, uh, they pass through ducts before they reach the surface of the skin. Um, also, as an example of an exocrine mode of secretion, we have the pancreas and the liver. Now, those are two organs. Um, the liver, for example, produces the bile, and the bile uh, is produced and secreted in the small intestine. So, uh, the bile produced by the liver is uh, secreted in a body cavity. Here we have the case where the secretion of those substances is not released outside of the body, but in a body cavity. So the secretion of um, the bile is released in a body cavity, which is the small intestine. Um, and uh, the bile is, tra um, is um, transferred through uh, to uh, to the small intestine through uh, the way of ducts also. So from uh, it passes from the liver to the small intestine through the way of ducts. Also, the pancreas uh, it produces the pancreatic juice, which uh, which is um, uh, enzymes. Which is a solution containing enzymes necessary, necessary for the dig digestion, and those enzyme or the, this pancreatic juice produced by the pancreas is um, passes through ducts, ducts to reach the pancreatic duct, and then it, they will reach the small intestine. So the production of this uh, pancreatic juice by the pancreas are transferred to ducts and then from the ducts to the small intestine so they are they pass in a duct system to reach the body cavity that's why the pancreas and the liver are considered as exocrine organs they are also endocrine but also they are exocrine due to the secretion of the bile and the pancreatic juice now the exocrine uh, Substances were not considered as hormone, and in general, they they don't they didn't use to consider them as hormone. But more recently, also uh, they are uh, talked about. They can be considered as a hormone. And finally, we have the paracrine and autocrine mode of secretions. So, as uh, we have said, in the paracrine mode of secretion, we have a cell. Which produces hormones or chemical messengers and those hormones will act on adjacent or neighboring cells or tissues so whenever we have hormones that are produced and which will act very close to their site of secretions on adjacent 
cells and tissues this is called a paracrine mode of secretion and those hormones are called paracrine hormones and the cells which produce those uh, hormones are called paracrine cells so we have the endocrine cells now as you remember the endocrine cells are the cells which produce hormones uh, which produce endocrine hormones so hormones uh, which pass in the blood circulation to reach their target and we have now the paracrine cells which produce uh, produces uh, uh, hormones that act on adjacent or uh, uh, cells and tissues and uh, in the autocrine mode of secretion we have cell which produces um, uh, hormones or chemical messengers and those hormones will act on the cell itself so will act will have an action on the self uh, itself that produce them so auto mean self so in an autocrine mode of secretion a cell will produce hormones which can act on the self on the cell itself so the hormones act back on the same cell that secretes them to influence its activity and in this case the cell that produces those autocrine hormones is called an autocrine cell and in the paracrine and autocrine secretions the hormones don't pass by the bloodstream okay they don't need to pass by the bloodstream since they act either on self on the cell itself like in the autocrine mode of secretion or on adjacent cells and tissues so as a conclusion uh, we have an endocrine mode of secretion, a paracrine, and an autocrine mode of secretion. And we have also talked about the exocrine secretions.